Hello everyone, welcome back to a new video tutorial in Autodesk Robot in which we are going to be talking about the design of cold formed sections. Now, the design of cold formed sections in Autodesk Robot is rather limited as far as we know and as far as the documentation goes. For example, one of the limitations is that the design of cold formed sections only works for specific codes, which is the Euro code, and only for specific section types, which I will show you in a moment. What I'm trying to say is, and even it has some sort of cryptic way of accessing it, so bear with me. Now, so far what we've done in this warehouse in the previous series, where I'll be linking above, is designing, is designing everything, with exception to code form sections, that I told you I will cover in a separate video. And I thought, okay, let me continue here, one final video about this. So with that being said, well, sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. So basically, in this video, we're going to try unravel the abilities of robot to design cold form sections, no matter how limited they are. So if you basically, let me just put you up to speed. If you go to design, steel member design, and basically, for example, select this, I'm just going to verify a member now, not design. If you select this and ask for member verification, just select this, you can see it's highlighted here, and just apply member verification, it will immediately tell you a warning, and I've ignored it so far. The warning basically tells you that the element's thickness is less than 3 mm, so Robert is correctly suspecting that this is a cold form section. Now here it's telling you that I am calculating the member according to the 199311 guidelines. However, it is recommended to analyze thin wall sections according to the Euro code 13, which is the, basically the code we want to analyze. So Robert is already smelling something fishy here, and it's tell you, it tells you you should do that. Now, okay, if you want to do this, how would you do that? Well, you need to enable the thin wall section parameter in the section definition, or in the member type definition. So if you click on member types, so far the purlins are done via a beam element. Now I need to make a purlin element out of it, so I click on beam, select new so that it copies my beam, and I'll call it my purlin. I'll keep those, uh, I will keep those as is. Now, of course, I had a full video talking about the details here. And I will leave them for now as is, so I will not care about something called the uh, buckling link and so on. So, okay, um, to enable the ability of robot to calculate via the thin walled sections or cold form sections, you have to click on thin walled sections and you can even go inside here and choose and change properties. I'm already not really satisfied with what robot does, but I just want to show you because I promised you that I will show you how it's done. Well, if you open here, you have types of forming if it's rolled or others. You can even select others if it's basically not rolled. Uh, you can even put some stiffness here and add some stuff. I'm not really happy about this. Um, the way this is happening here is that you sometimes you have fasteners or bolts that basically connect built up sections if they have it here and even add some sheeting here. I'm not really happy about this. I just cancel and leave it as is for now. So even if you save this and apply this to your section list, so for example, if I select on section selection, and basically select my ZCE, which are all my parallels now. If I click here to implement the selection and apply, I have them now as thin walled sections. Now, I would think this would be enough, and if you redesign 263, you see yet multiple errors, not only one, multiple errors. Now, uh, the first error here is that the program did not perform any lateral buckling verification. That's true, and that's not a problem, because I have not, and I have not enabled this. If I had enabled this buckling thing, then it will not basically had this error here. So this error is okay. I accept that because I didn't care about this. You can enable those buckling things and this error goes away. Now in wall thickness comes to the real warnings. Wall thickness of 263 is less than 3 mm. This is the previous warning. It tells you that please analyze it as thin walled sections. Now this comes to a surprise because we have enabled it, right? Like we have just enabled thin walled sections. So what is he yapping about? Why is he angry? Well, if you go to the second error, you see exactly what the problem is. For member 263, the program did not perform any analysis of thin walled members according to the Euro code uh, 13. This is crazy because, I mean, we just selected that, right? So Robert is not doing what we were asking it for. Why is this happening here? It's happening here because Robert is not understanding that this is a cold form section and it just assumes it to be solid. Now, why is he doing this? And this is where my research took place because it was like, wait, what? 
We are clearly asking robots to design as thin walled. We are clearing. We are clearly providing an element that is basically flagged as thin walled, and it doesn't work. Now I had to do some research here, in robot, and research I did, like honest to God. And even I want to give a huge whopping shout out to our dear subscriber and channel members, the Maltani, for basically basically leading me to this stuff. I had to research and understand why this is happening. You see, even if you apply a thin walled section. And even if you go through all those steps outlined in Autodesk's help file or help uh, website and do everything correctly and enable, of course, buckling and so on, and even enable thin wall sections in the design, it's not using the Eurocode EN313, which stands for Eurocode 199313. You see here in the tutorial, it tells you that design forces should be calculated here according to the EN3136141. If I go back here, of course, the error is there. So, of course, it's not designed via this. Uh, this this uh, this equation. If you go to detail to understand what I'm talking about, yes, it lists the code here, the cold formed code. It does. That's okay, and it calls it en three one three. So whenever I see en three one three here, I will understand it's using the cold formed section code. However, if I go down to the design forces, you can see that the design forces here are basically found via the normal code, not the Euro code, unlike what is shown here. Here it's shown EN313, here there is nothing about EN313. So I was like thinking, what gives? What's happening here? I tried to run, of course, there is the fine print in the built bottom. bottom. Let, let me try to give you a short version of this. Robot designs cold formed sections only if two conditions apply. Condition number one is that your element is basically signaling to robot that it's a thin walled element that's the first condition the second condition believe it or not is that autodesk robot can design thin walled section only for a handful of selected sections nothing more now how did i get this file i got this file from here i will link from the attachment here i'll copy the link of this site into the description of this video and in the bottom you can see the attachment ec thin walled sections the reason why the thin wall sections is so limited is because uh, this is the remnants of robot when it was called Robobat Millennium in like 2005-ish or something. You can even see when you open the file, you can even see the title Wybrani Ops G Cien Kosien something Polish, something in Polish. Sorry, my Polish is not that good. So even this file is from the remnants of back the day when the robot was called Robobat. It's very old and archaic. So you can only design cold form sections only if the sections are according to what you see here from those databases. Now, how would you go on and do this in real life? In real life, you will basically have to find the section from those databases that corresponds to the sections you have in real life. Now, I will assume, and this will take time, by the way. Now, I will assume that I'm going to use a Polish section called Stal Pro KZP. And notice the crazy thing here. Not only does it tell you the database you should use, it tells you the database you should use and the exact section you should use. Let, let me explain this. So I will load this style pro database. So I'll go to preferences, job preferences, and basically load me this style pro. So I'll add this and I'll browse because you will not be able to see it here. So I'm browsing now the profile sections from Autodesk Robot. And I'm going to basically STAL, style pro. This is, I'll just double click it. And you can see that this is the Polish catalog. Catalog, crystal, I don't know what this is. Sorry, my Polish is not that good. I'll add this. I have it already, it seems. So, because I had to do it backstage. Oh, there we go, it's there. Of course, if you, uh, if you have it down, you have to push it up. Like, you should select it and push it up. Move selected section database up. Because if it's, not, if it's very down, it will not be visible. I just added style pro, which is basically one of the things that you can use to called from sections and those are the only sections you're allowed to do as per what he's seeing here. you can read this note and understand from this note what he wants uh, see for example here this is a list of thin walled shapes recognized by robot and that's exactly what i'm talking about here so okay let's uh, go to our structure and basically apply our section so if you go to the section here and select new section you can select from the new section basically a section now you can see the database is AISC and style product and Arbit and so on. Uh, so okay, I just use style product like this. And notice style product has a lot of families. And the only family that is recognized as a cold formed section is KZP. 
Even KZ is not recognized as a cold form section, although it's a Z shape. So KZP, and I have only two sections here. I will just choose me the big section. I'm not really sure if this will work or not. So I'll add that and close that. Of course, now I should basically use it and apply it to all my parallels. So I select my parallels via ZC, and I click here and apply. Now they are all having new sections. They are bigger, actually. Since the section got updated, I have, of course, to perform my analysis again, which means I have to perform my entire design run again. I will not perform a design run today. I will not design... Oh, I had a small error, by the way, uh, because I think the section was using the steel material. Yeah, there we go. But I should have used S275, which is my Eurocode material. So, okay, I'll just quickly fix that and rerun the analysis. Okay, so now there is no errors. And we are done with our analysis. Of course, you should do now a redesign of all the sections because the sections have changed, which means the internal forces have changed. I will not do that because I have already detailed everything I want to detail in my warehouse design series, so you are more than capable of doing this. Just to make sure, I will just select my Perlin and reapply it in all those elements. So I select my KZP. There we go. Wait, what? The bracings became KZPs? No, no, this is incorrect. I, I selected two. My bad. Uh, just double click here. And there we go. Select this. Apply my parallel just to make sure that everything is fine. Also, my parallel is thin wall section. I don't care about buckling for now. You can enable it if you want. To recap, we have enabled thin wall sections in the member type definition. We also have used one of the sections are specifically marked as being thin wall section in Autodesk Robot. Now everything seems to be fine, and I should be able to do that. I could do a design or verification. I'm going to do me a group verification. To be honest, I forgot what the group was for Perlins, so I need to check very quickly. I think the group for Perlins was group number 7. And if you want to see how we've done group number 5. If you want to see how we've done those groups, please check out my videos about designing steel structures and industrial warehouses. I think I will link the video above. Okay, so code group verification is selected. I should perform calculation. Now it might work or it might not work. And if it doesn't work, we should select a bigger section. Those details have been discussed before. But what I try to see now is to see if it's going to design using cold form sections or not. So now it's basically doing some stuff here. It's uh, very verifying. I chose code group 15 and uh, case 16. Case 16 because case 16 is one of my ultimate limit states, something we've done in this series. If you go to, okay, there is an error that uh, it did not find the formula, so it calculated using bisymmetric elements. Fine for me. I go to results. Okay, it's almost failing, like 1.01. Almost failing. I would just select a bigger one, but the problem is that the style for data database does not have a bigger section here. So I should select me another section from another database. But I will now just wing it and accept it. Because my point here is not to select sections, my point here is to make sure that it's using the Euro code correctly. And it does. If you take a look at the section check on the forces, of course, this has been explained before in detail, you can see that it's now flagging it as EN3136192. 6192 is the design equation from the Euro code 1993-13, and that's the, for, that's the code for you. If you want to see it in more detail, you can click detailed results just to check. You can see that it's telling you here that, okay, I am going to use EN313 as my code form section code. And most importantly, when you go to the, yeah, when you go to the forces and even section parameters, you can see suddenly all those things are flagged by EN313. It's flagged by the code form section because the robot sees that it's a code form section because you have used one of the special sections in robot. If you go to the forces, down here, the force design forces, how much it calculates, you can see EN313's effect clearly there. You can see the forces, the resistances, everything is being calculated by EN313, which is the cold form code. Even the verification check is done by EN313, so basically we have designed a cold form section. For more details, you can check out my previous videos, you could define bigger sections, you could import or change the database to use bigger Z channels. So yeah, you can basically redesign it if you want. You can change the section, choose a bigger section from the list that robot deems to be cold form section. You cannot just arbitrarily select any section. So yeah, that's everything I wanted to talk about in cold form sections. And with that being said, I want to give a huge whopping CEE slash cold form sized shout out to our dear channel members whose names are going to be shown on the screen. 
I want to thank them from the bottom of my heart as their generous support to our channel and it enables us providing you with the videos on a weekly basis. Of course, you could join the YouTube members via the links provided in the description of this video. With that being said, I hope that you enjoyed the video and that it was beneficial for you. Of course, if you have enjoyed the video, then please like, share, comment, and subscribe, especially subscribing because it helps increase the reach of my channel. As per usual, this is the Civil Engineering Essentials channel, and we will catch you in the next video.